Charlie, Spencer, Chair. Uh, fine uh, gentlemen, uh, I mean, fine friends from uh, the opposition, and we look, look for a deeper conversation. No, this kind of dever conversation never happened during the Tiananmen Square, although we wanted to have that. We, the one of the biggest slogan of the Tiananmen student movement, we demand, we demanded dialogue. As simple as that. We wanted dialogue with our government, and they denied it. Uh, dialogue is part of our way of life in the country of democracies. And that kind of a life, our dialogue, uh, can we continue to dialogue here in the Oxford Union, in Hong Kong, Tibet, Uyghur, East Turkestan, that is under <clears throat> very, very direct uh, threat, ex existential threat from the Chinese Communist Party. When I first heard this topic uh, that I'm coming here to debate, and I said, you know, I, my thought was this is a topic that needs not any debate. But then seconds in sinking into it, and I said, wow, this is a topic that needs to debate simply because we haven't talked about this simple, non-needed uh, motion enough. A debate, a dialogue, is important way of life uh, that we are having in, in the democracies, but uh, unfortunately, we are, in China, we don't have that. Well, I, I can't understand it. Why, why would Chinese regime want any dialogue? They would lose on any dialogues. They will lose on any debate. With, with a few topics we talked about, like environmental protection, that, uh, that w w would China want to get into a debate, uh, a dialogue? Let's forget about debate, about a dialogue. In Tiananmen, we wanted a dialogue to introduce uh, simple things like freedom of expression, freedom of assembly. We wanted our student organization, we call Autonomous Students Union, uh, that led the 1989 student movement to be legalized. And that, the Chinese regime don't want to have that, have a dialogue with, with us. So they, w they probably will lose any di uh, dialogue, so they decided from their idea, let's just refuse all of them. But when we say, we, when we demanded really hard in 1989, when there are hundreds of cities, more than hundreds of millions of Chinese citizens took the street, Ask for that simple thing called dialogue. The answer from that regime is tanks and, and standing troops invading its own capital uh, created a massacre. And later history called it June Force Massacre. And I'm a survivor of that. I think that gives me a little uh, a credit of letting you know what the true character of the Chinese Communist regime is. From that point, you will understand if that is, uh, if, if the CCP regime is an existential threat to our way of life. Before that, let's, let's uh, talk about the logic. Um, the, there is a, my, my, my Gmail account get hacked uh, all the time. And then uh, the Gmail uh, will give me a banner, pink colored banner on top of my, all my emails and says, you have been attacked by a government sponsored hacking. So uh, we Google stop them, but you have been under attack. Am I under existential threat from that hacker? Or because Google managed to stop them, that I'm not? We, democracy is far more resilient, that I agree. That doesn't mean it's not the thorn in the eye of the Chinese totalitarian regime that they want to change. They don't care what's happening outside of China, really? How about currency manipulation? How about hackers I just talked about? How about Hong Kong? Do Hong Kong, do you see Hong Kong as, well, part of China because it was, it was turned over uh, by uh, the United Kingdom back to China, so it's, it's it become a problem within the Chinese border. If the world map is drawn in two color, one side is freedom, the other is against freedom, not freedom, totalitarianism. Our side, 
the freedom color, lost the city, it's called Hong Kong. If we talk about border, border is something Chinese government shamelessly used to control its own people and to deal with the West, to deal with dissent. They deny passport to Ai Weiwei. That, um, that story you must have heard. And simply because he's a dissident. And then also they deny passport to my parents. Consequently, I haven't seen them for 30 some years. Put yourself in that shoe, think about that. Uh, of course, they deny visa for reporters to, re to journalists who report the truth. Does that have an existential threat to the press freedom in the world? Imagine the, the, the biggest news outfit, where if they want their journalists to be in Beijing, to be stationed in Beijing, they have to alter their tone. Western Hollywood stars who played in the role to criticize Chinese will make the producer think again, do I dare using him again, Richard Gere? Because if I, if I hire him in my film, that film will be denied of Chinese market. That's why you haven't seen Richard Gere for so long. Chinese, the, the, the biggest mistake the Western world have had is to think of China is something that we can relate to. It's about the same. They're, they're, and then they're not like, a, uh, just about 10 years ago, people will, will have a really difficult time to believe that they can lock up millions of people in a concentration camp because of the difference of the ethnicity the language, the religion. <clears throat> the Western world, I'm saying, when, that, when this first outbreak in the 2017, the Western world, the, the attitude of the Western world is, it's unbelievable. So let's not believe it. Unbelievable doesn't mean you don't believe that. <clears throat> and then the media had the responsibility of telling the truth. Another uh, uh, hat that I wear is I'm a, I'm a senior member at the Reporter Without Border, the international organization that promotes freedom of information. We were set, uh, sitting in a, a dilemma. Do we encourage reporting on the Uyghur issue? Or do we ask our journalists to be a more responsible one so that they need to get concrete evidence before they report that? Let me remind you one little thing. The, the existence of Holocaust was only discovered weeks, about two months before the victory of European Day. And, but that, it, it existed for many years before that. And do you ask the, 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 the camp survivors to provide videos or photographs so that the world can join together and condemn uh, uh, the existence of the uh, concentration camp? That, well, and Chinese denies every attempt the world tried to report on Xinjiang, on Uyghur issue. And then do we just say, well, we don't have enough evidence? Or do we say the Chinese refuse us of accessing those evidences? They, the Chinese totalitarian regime, they hold a very different set of value from the West. Yes, I agree. And then there's the so-called freedom democracy is a Western-centric idea. Okay, sure. Is the Chinese government is not so Western-centric, so we, we have to respect their existence simply because we are nicer people. We want the existence of a non-Western-centric value system. That, that, well, first of all, what's wrong with our system? We want freedom. We want you know, human rights. We want equality. Why it's not compatible with China? That, is, that would be the question I want to ask. And then the proposed value system of the Chinese Communist Party is not compatible with ours. So if we cannot have the two system, two value system coexist. That make them a, an existential threat to our value system, to our way of life. When we, when we talk about a way of life, of course I'm not talking about, you know, the British people drink your black tea with milk. <laughs> Where, whereas Chinese drink unroasted or half-roasted green tea. We, we, we were people, we hate Chinese to 
death today, but we, we all agree they grow pretty decent teeth. <laughs> I'm ta- when, I talk about, uh, when I talk about the way of life, of course I'm not talking about what kind of teeth we, cho- we choose. We're talking about the freedom that we enjoy. We talk about our access to choices, moral choices. Let me also give you one example that in 2016, Taiwan hold a, a general election, and then a Democratic Progressive Party, DPP, who are more of uh, standing on against China uh, aggression, uh, where the opposition, KMT, is more in an engagement uh, platform. The KMT lost, uh, DPP won, despite the Chinese Communist very high volume warning. They basically told Taiwanese people, don't vote for DPP, we don't like them. Because they do not uh, uh, agree with our China framework that includes Taiwan as part of that. Uh, and well, Taiwanese people, you know, democracy, again, if there is a world map drawn in two colors, Taiwan is on the very democratic side. And then uh, when DPP won, despite of Chinese government's warning, what happened immediately after the election? The Chinese started sanction against Taiwan. They are, and then all they are saying is we are sanctioning against DPP, but really they are sanctioning voters. They are sanctioning that they wanted to exercise their democratic rights to vote for whoever they want. And they say we're going to one day reunify Taiwan, and Taiwanese people said no, what's that going, what does it mean? It means the way of life of Taiwan The way of life of this vivid democracy that you can relate to is under an existential threat. That's why that directed Taiwanese people to vote against the other party, say, let's uh, let's engage with China. Engagement is another term that the Western world have been using for the last 20 some years. And then that is one of the biggest mistakes. Well, the mistake I blame mostly to the United States. Right after Tiananmen, the, at that time, the president, Senior Bush, uh, sent a, a, a secret delegation to Beijing, basically told Beijing, like, we don't like what you did in Tiananmen. You killed so many innocent people, but we're going to cut a slack. We're going to continue to do business with you. What kind of message does it send to Chinese regime? Well, the Western world followed. I, You know, I blame the U.S. most, but I also blame the U.K. a lot, simply because that is something this country should know better than other people. That policy is called appeasement. And that appeasement is based on illusions. Three illusions. The first illusion is like, uh, okay, if we do business with China, we're going to make them rich. So when they become rich, they can become more of a capitalist country, and then that will give birth to a uh, uh, more of a uh, middle class, which will give birth to a civil society, which will give birth to democracy. That was the uh, first illusion. At best, I call it naive. The second illusion is that if we keep doing this business with, with China, we know we're enabling a human rights abuser they are totalitarian, we are different in a different camp, but it will be the Chinese who take the consequences, the Tibetan, the, the democracy activists. Um, they, at that time, probably couldn't even think of Hong Kong or Uyghur people. But, but in the longer run, dealing with China, appeasing China, will benefit us, us, the Western democracies. This illusion, at best, I call it selfish. The third illusion is like, if we keep dealing with China, we will make Chinese regime a party that we can deal with, that they can dialogue, we can have dialogue with, we can bring them into the world system. This illusion, sorry, no other words, it's downright stupid. The the world have been seeing uh, this for the decades, but why couldn't we change, make our, the difference that, uh, that, that, that amend our own China policy. Because democracy has its own um, uh, side effect, the nearsightedness. 
In democracies, politicians think about re-election, which happens down the years, a couple of three, four, I don't know. But then basically, democracy has this uh, 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 short nearsightedness that have prevented uh, countries to think about, wow, we are enabling this country, this regime that is coming back, becoming a, a threat to, to ourselves. Just in the last second. <laughs> so when forming the China policy, I, my advice to the Western world is that you consult criminologists because that's exactly what they are. They didn't come to power through democratic elections. They didn't come to power through a revolution. They inherited it from their totalitarian older generations, and then they're using that power to loot the country. They spread propaganda like they want to rejuvenation of the, uh, of the nation, using any words that ends with ISM, ism, to describe Chinese Communist Party is giving them too much credit. They are neither communist, socialist, patriotist. All these words are wrong. They are thugs. So happen to be one of the largest ones the history has seen. Thank you. Get your heads around this. China is the exist existential threat to our way of life. Thank you. Thank you.